people are hardwired to follow fear. But I'm trying to tell business people that's the worst thing you can do right now, that, that hope is more powerful than fear. And hope and action, having a plan, taking action, having hope, that leaves fear in the dust. And, and that's what we need to focus on. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I am your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be a fantastic one. Our returning guest is the founder of the world's leading referral organization, Business Networking International, or BNI, as you probably know it, Dr. Ivan Meisner. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Michael. It's great to be back on. I appreciate the invite. I absolutely love the opportunity to have conversations with you. And I know our listeners absolutely get so much value from doing it. So I woke up this morning thinking, ah, I get to talk to Ivan. This is going to be a complete pump in the arm. And so (laughs) looking forward to it. The world, since we last chatted, the world has changed dramatically. I'd love to hear what you've been going through and how you've been dealing with it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people call it the lockdown and quarantine. I, I, I think mindset is so important right now, and I like to call it the great pause because the pause button has been hit on all of our lives, all of our lives, and it's given us both opportunities and it's created challenges for us. Certainly BNI has had a massive challenge. I mean, when you think about it, we have over 9,500 groups that meet in person every week. So we have 9,500 meetings a week all around the world. And when the COVID virus hit, uh, we had to turn on a dime to move all of our 9,500 groups to online, which is what we have done. All of our chapters still meet every week, but they're meeting online instead of in person. It's incredible. Uh, I mean, I imagine that in itself would have been uh, an incredible Feet. I mean, we're talking about almost 10,000 meetings. Yeah. And then how many people? I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of people. H- hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands of but people. Who's, who's counting? Who's counting? <laughs> yeah, it's, inc- it's remarkable. What was that like? How, you know, there must have been some challenges that you faced doing oh, that. Yeah, uh, massive challenges. But, l- but let me first say uh, our, our CEO, uh, Graham Weimiller, Graham was looking around a corner. Because he saw this before any of us did. And he, he said, he predicted, this is going to be a really serious issue. And so one of the things that he did was he started to flip chapters to online in the countries where it was most serious. So China was one of the first, Italy, then some other European countries. And we tested the online program in a few groups uh, around the world because we wanted to make it feel familiar to members so that it wasn't like completely different, that it felt like a BNI meeting, but one that was online. So we made the full transition in China back in January. Wow. And then by early February, Italy, by other countries in February, and by March, the entire world, BNI worldwide, 9,500 chapters was fully online so that we could protect our members because safety was really critical. And business networking meetings can be a super spreader. And we did not want that to happen to our members. So we made the transition to online. Now, we hope to go back to in-person when it is safe. Uh, But in the meantime, our members can continue to network and support each other during the great pause. Mm. 
It's uh, it's remarkable. I, I will say, excellent leadership from your CEO for for yeah. seeing it and acting quickly. I mean, it's one thing to to deal with it; it's a whole other to deal with it proactively and and yes. take action right away. Uh, yeah, and what's really interesting is that much of the organization was up in arms at first. What are you thinking? This is crazy. And he stood fast and said, no, this is, this is what we need to do. And I'm telling you, uh, we have a company today because of the direction that he took. And I think a lot of people who were saying this is crazy are now thankful that, that he's done what he's done. Well, there's a reason he's the CEO. He's doing a great yes, job <laughs> showing leadership. And, um, and it is interesting in these times, you know, we're seeing examples. I mean, leadership is in the, is in the news every day, good and bad. And uh, it's been very inspiring to see the, the good examples. Let's talk about that. I think that people right now, more than ever, need to microdose their news about the COVID virus. You need to stay on top of things, but you need to microdose it. I know some people who are obsessed with what's going on and they're watching TV eight hours, 10 hours a day. And those people absolutely are convinced that the world's coming to an end. The sky is falling. We'll never get out of this. We'll never be the same. And it's the worst thing thing I think people can do. You have to limit your intake. Know what's going on. You know, take a look at the news. I, I, I get a mobile, I have mobile apps and I look first thing in the morning, what's happened. And I look towards the end of the evening, but I do not sit in front of TV and watch for hours what the media is telling us what we should watch. I pick and choose the things that I think are critical. And I think that's really important to be in the right headspace right now. Agreed. Agreed. And I, I think it's protecting uh, the mentality that we have. And, and we, ha we can never forget. I mean, often when we're listening, the more we listen to these sources, I know when I listen to them, I, I for a moment, take it as truth. You know, yes. it's like because, because someone said it and it's on some form of distribution that it's actually the truth. I mean, it's more and more I'm thinking and reminding myself it's just an opinion. It's just someone's words. Well, uh, yeah. So go ahead. Isn't that interesting? Because I remember growing up and the news was the news. It, it was the news. And when there was an opinion, there would always be something going across the screen saying, this is the opinion of our host. You know, this is... The, this is this person's opinion. And so you knew when you were listening to opinions. Now what we uh, get is almost nothing but opinions. And, and, you know, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, but they're often opinions. And that doesn't mean they're always right. And I miss those days where you knew for sure whether you were listening to an opinion or you were listening to the news. It, it, it really is. I mean, it's, if there's one thing that, that has come out of this in the last couple of months is really just craving that, which is this is some facts that are coming to you yeah. versus opinions. And, and, you know, sometimes if you look closely enough, you can see that somebody is, you know, they're incented just to have an opinion, yes. right? Yes. And, yes. and that is, that's dangerous because it's like, well, I have to write about this to keep my job or, you yeah. know, to get into whatever the incentive is. But it's like, you know, what what is that? What service is that doing as us, yeah. the consumer of that? What's it doing to our minds? Um, oh, listen, fear, fear sells. It always has sold. You know, years ago, it was other countries were going to attack us, right? Uh, and those countries, uh, after the 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 you know the Iron Curtain fell, it was then other countries that were going to attack us. And when things were pretty tame, then it was an asteroid that was going to hit, or it was earthquakes that were going to hit. There's people are hardwired to follow fear, but I'm trying to tell business people that's the worst thing you can do right now. That that hope is more powerful than fear, and hope. And action, having a plan, taking action, having hope, that leaves fear in the dust. And, and that's what we need to focus on right now. I, I, I had a guy who said to me on my social media, you're giving people false hope by saying things like that. And, and I, I actually, I, I thanked him. I did a podcast on him mm. <laughs> and his, his attack on me doing this is false hope. And I said, no, it's not false hope. 
Hope is hearing that little voice inside you whispering what can be when everyone around you is shouting what can't be. And I think hopeless action leaves fear in the dust. And that's what the world needs right now more than ever. I agree. And thank you for bringing it up. And and uh, there was a movie that I, I watched quite a few years ago, The Shawshank Redemption. And the tagline oh. of that movie yeah. was, fear will keep you prisoner and hope will set you free. And it's a philosophy, but it's one that we have around here as well. So uh, the world's better when we're focusing on on hope and what you said, which is action. It needs to yeah. have both. Yeah, hope, hope uh, without uh, action is just wishful thinking. So you, you need, you need to take action. I'm a, even, even the, you know, I'm a real believer in the law of attraction and was very active when the movie, the secret came out. A lot of people don't know this, but I was actually filmed for the secret. I ended up on the cutting room floor of that movie. Oh, big mistake, big mistake. It, it, yeah. Well, you should have made it. She had her reasons and I understand them, Rhonda, a wonderful person. And it was a great movie. And I believe in, in the law of attraction, but the word action is part of the word attraction. And so one must attract what one wants in life, but then you have to take action in order for that attraction to, to, to happen. Agreed. And I think it, it, in times like this, this is a time to be thinking about that. And then it can almost seem maybe unfamiliar for people to be thinking about something uh, like a vision or, or what you want to attract and, yeah. and, and, and getting the focus there. We had a, a great author uh, that I love, uh, Trevor uh, Blake, who wrote Three yeah. Simple Steps, which is, is about your mentality and, and making sure you're focusing on what you want and attracting because you attract it. Right. And so how do people, you know, be, being someone who, who, who is really a, a, probably an expert at it because of what you've attracted and created the value that you've created in the world for other people, I mean, you attract not only for yourself, but for hundreds of thousands of people. What, how do people in these times get to that place when maybe it's challenging to even think a positive thought? Yeah, so I, I see two types of people often when there's a crisis. There are those who are frozen by fear, and there are those who are focused by fear. And I've seen people who were frozen who realized that that was not serving them well and they had to get focused. And so they got focused. And it begins with the right mindset. That's why I call this the great pause. And there are there are good things that have come from this. We've connected with family in a way that we haven't in the past. We've connected with friends in a way that we haven't in the past. I, I really don't like the term social distancing. I prefer physical distancing because we need to be more social than ever. We need to activate our network in ways we've never did before. When, you know, before the COVID virus, a lot of people would say to me, I don't have the time to network. Okay, you got plenty of time now. So mm -hmm. now's the time to activate your network, to go deep in your network, to be building relationships with people, to, to activate that network so that when we are let out of the great pause, you will be much further ahead of your competition who has been frozen in fear. Instead, get focused by fear. Mm. I love it. And so when we focus, we're able to take on you know, the simple things, really, when you think about right. it, uh, uh, the day, if there's 10 hours of negative news, disturbing news, then what we're left with just whatever's been delivered. So yep. there's an, an incredible amount of time. It's what we're, what we're focusing on with the time that we do have. And time has been, like you say, increased. Yeah, it, you know, we, we have much more time to do it. So the kinds of things that I recommend people do is is reach out to their network. Um, take a look at, at the people. I, I would start in reverse order of what I teach as the VCP process, that in networking, you first have to be visible, then you establish credibility, and then you get to profitability. And these are people who are referring you regularly. So go in reverse order. Start with the, the, the people that you're a profitability with and reach out to them. Now, luckily, this has happened in a time when we have technology like we have. 
It, had this happened when I started BNI in 1985, I mean, the, the, there was no technology like this. Mm. The second largest line item in my budget was the telephone bill. Uh, staff was number one, telephone bill was number two. Today, I don't even know where the phone bill is. So we have this technology where we can do face-to-face, -face, yeah, it's two-dimensional, but face-to-face -face meetings through Zoom, Skype, GoToMeeting, in ways that we couldn't do before. So activate your network by starting with the people that you have a really deep relationship with and, and asking them, how are you doing? How's everything going? Is there anything I can help you with? Here's some things that maybe you can help me with. Uh, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do when the great pause is over. And these are what I'm thinking of. What are you doing? Brainstorm with people. Use your network to help you get prepared. And then once you're finished with the people that you're a profitability with, then go to the people that you're a credibility with. The people who know you, they like you, they trust you. Maybe they haven't done business with you or referred you, but they know you. Then go to them, do the same scenario. And then go to the people that you're a visibility with, people that you've met, but you don't know real well, reach out to them and say, hey, you know, during this time, I want to make good use of this time. And you're somebody that I've really wanted to get to know and just haven't had the time and, and to, to be able to devote to it. And we have the time now. Are you free for a, a, a Skype meeting or a Zoom meeting where we could just talk a little more and I could get to know you so that when we're let out, uh, possibly we can help one another. That's what we need to be doing right now, not crying the blues and being frozen by fear. Oh, you know, and the people that do what you're recommending are going to be the people that will have a rapid return to normalcy, but a rapid return beyond normalcy because it really is like you say the f the freeze if you're freezing right now and not doing anything not being doing things that are, are going to help you in the future yeah. it's 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 really a missed opportunity but like you can I can just hear in this conversation I'm inspired to like get off this call right here with you and actually call some of those uh, wonderful people in my life that yeah you know what a couple of weeks ago, I was saying I was too busy to call, but I, I right. have time. There are spaces in my day that weren't there before because of what's happened. And so what does that mean? It's planting beautiful seeds into the, yes. the, the soil that, that is already wonderfully nurturing yeah. and ready to go. It's like, this is the time to be planting. And you know what's really amazing is that sometimes... You know, most of us are, what are we going to do when the great pause is over? But sometimes somebody will give you an idea that allows you to do something right now. I'll give you a great example. I had one BNI member who was an upholstery repair shop. Well, you know what? There aren't too many people dropping off furniture to get reupholstered right now. And it's not exactly an essential business. And so she was shut down. But in talking to people, uh, she came to the realization that she's got rolls and rolls of cloth. Why not change her business on an interim ba basis to a face mask business using high quality cloth? And so she literally turned her, her upholstery repair shop into a COVID mask shop. And and people started, she, and then she activated her network by saying, hey, I got this great idea. I'm going to do this. And they started sharing it with hospitals and nurses and hospice centers who started then buying these masks. One nurse said to her, this is the best mask I have ever seen. The quality is outstanding. She's so, selling tons of masks, but yet she's an upholstery repair shop for a living. You never know what great ideas can come out of activating your network right now. They're remarkable. You know, the resilience uh, of, of human beings and, and entrepreneurs. I mean, if you're focused on something, it, it it, it's like the, there's unlimited opportunity, but you have to pause, you have to be open, you have to be in that mindset where you're ready to to take that action. It's very interesting how you said that we're in the great pause, but literally we have the control to push the yep. play button while the pause is on. I mean, we get the pause and play. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there are things we can absolutely do, even if you can't reinvent your business um, like BNI has done, or you can't do it like the upholstery shop has done. You can be investing in your business right now and investing in yourself. You should be pouring into yourself right now. You know, many people 
in BNI, we have an online platform called BNI University where you can see a lot of videos and, and materials on how to improve your business, things like that, YouTube, books. Now's the time when you didn't have before to invest in yourself so that you are a better business person when you come out of this. It really truly is, I think, about attitude. If all you do is focus on problems, you become an expert at problems. But if you focus on solutions, you can become an expert at solutions. fantastic you know it is there is so much time that's been given to all of us when you just think about it. i was l- listening to a presentation by brian halligan who's the the uh, co-founder of hubspot and a very wonderful person making a difference in the world uh, he was talking about the fact that many people have now been handed this work from home you we have to work from home well the, there's no longer are we in, in traffic, no longer are we uh, having to do things that are unproductive, even though some of those unproductive things do provide value in some way. You know, it's different change of pace, all that good stuff. But there is these little gaps of time that are no longer there. And as human beings, we could very easily fill those spaces with things that are just more of what what was there before and that that's not right. valuable. I think what I'm getting out of this conversation, I hope our listener is getting out of this conversation is that let's put some valuable things into those spaces that pour into ourselves. Yeah. And it's not too late. You know, as the world starts to open up in some places, not everywhere, but in some places, it's not too late. You still have time. Invest in yourself start doing those one-to-ones online, you know, spend time on books that will help you, YouTube videos that will help you, anything to help prepare you uh, for when we hit the play button and are able to go out. I, I'm here to tell you, BNI members are going to come out of this much stronger than the average business person because most of them have been focused on solutions and plans rather than, you know, being paralyzed by that fear that we talked about. Hmm. I I believe so as well. And I'd love to hear some of the things, you know, going online in a meeting, having to do some of these strategies in a new way, uh, people are not familiar with them. Even your your members, I'm sure it was disruptive no. to them. It's like, I, yes. what are, how are we going to do this? I don't know how to do this. But what have you seen? What are some of the skills and behaviors that you've seen pouring out from your, your members as they've embraced this change? Yeah, so I had one, you're talking about you know, people not uh, feeling comfortable embracing the change. I had one chapter president ask me, uh, she, well, she said to me, I, I've got a BNI member, he's, he's a baby boomer. Uh, and of course, I'm a baby boomer. Uh, and she said he, he just, we had a hard time just getting him to do, to pass referrals online through our online platform called Connect, BNI Connect. You know, we had a hard time just getting him to do that. He just is not, committed to doing the online meeting. He doesn't know how. What do I tell him? And so I I said to her, tell him this. Tell him, Ivan said he hates change. Ivan hates change. The only thing Ivan hates worse than change is failure. And so he suggested to you that you can change or you can fail. The choice is yours. Nobody can make you do that. But if you're willing to make the change, I, her, as the president of that chapter, am willing to help you walk through the process of the change so you don't have to fail. You can't push a noodle. You can't make someone do something they don't want to do. So what you have to do is position it so that here are your choices. You choose. I'm not going to choose for you. You know, I have a member. I'm not my member. You're, you are who you are. So I can help you get to that point of change and success, or you can stay where you are and it's not going to be pretty. And he changed. He made that, that change. And I was so proud of him. And that's, that's where you have to start. You have to make, you have to be willing to make that change. You had a second part to that question. I didn't answer it. 
what was the second part? I, I really love the story. First off, and uh, it's remarkable. You know, you 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 impact the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, and yet you talk like you know every single one of them, which uh, is incredible to me. And and I think a great reason why you're so successful and the organization is so successful. It's uh, it's refreshing and inspiring. Uh, that's why I woke up this morning knowing this would be a fantastic conversation for me, selfishly. Mm. <laughs> but uh, I love bringing it to our listener. Um, the second part of the question really was: I don't know that it wasn't answered, but it was: what are you? What skill sets are you seeing come from that? And I think the skill set is dealing with change, right? Embracing change. Yeah. Uh, and and I love the framing, right? Yeah, who doesn't like change? Right? Who moves my cheese? Fantastic yes. book, right? Everybody's right. cheese has been moved uh, oh, yeah. right down to our little ones, right? Uh, yeah. And so everybody's I go through that process of going like, hey, I, I need that cheddar back. Yeah, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. And so I told you about the guy who said you're giving people a false hope. Mm-hmm. I had another person uh, that same day reach out to me and say, it, it, or talk about the same post that I made about hope. And he said, I... I Conceptually, I believe in the hope, but I don't know what the hope is in, you know, how can I, how can I position this in a positive way when I'm here with my children and things are chaotic and I have no business? What do I do? And I said, look for the things that you, that you can do. You're there with your kids, you said. Now's the time to really make connections with your children. He, one of the things he was saying is that they have to, you know, they have to stay in school. They have to learn. And he said, so talk to them about what they're learning. Talk to them, make that personal connection, make it real for them, work with them, tell them what you're learning, find out what they're learning. This is the best opportunity to make connections with your children. And while they're, while you've given them an assignment to do, that's when you can then go online and do that one-to-one and work with them and, and spend quality, truly quality time with your children. You will come out of this feeling so much stronger, not only professionally, but personally. And he wrote me back and he said, oh my goodness, you're absolutely right. And I've just been obsessed with everything that's wrong rather than looking at what's positive. And I think that's a change. And I think the man who said, okay, I'll get that online, I'll make it happen. That's a change. I think here's a positive thing for online meetings versus in person. It is really easy to do PowerPoint slides with you know, before and after photos, our members often show here's here's something before I was involved. Here's something after I got involved. Well, now when it's online, that kind of sharing of photographs and experiences and maybe even videos, I can do video messages globally. It's easy to do it with Zoom uh, or with, with any other online platform. And so there's a lot of things we can learn right now if we have the right m- approach mentally. Agreed, and uh, and so may. In fact, PowerPoint presentations uh, become even more desirable in a Zoom than just looking at each other. Right? It's like you, you yeah. have to. It's like, well, great, we can look at some pictures. You know, look at the text. It's uh, it's an incredible platform, and and it's different. And there's pros and there's cons, but uh, focusing on the pro versus yep. the con. Yep, absolutely, exactly right. And what do you see now for how will this look? In the future, I mean, let's say you know we don't know what even next moment spring, but let's yeah. look out into the future. The world has opened up again. Uh, how, how do you see the new behaviors, the new change, the embracing of online? How will that shift? How BNI works in the future? So it's, it's interesting. I wrote an article back in 2018 at Entrepreneur where I said the future of face to face will be online. I wrote that in 2018. Now, at the time, I was thinking not of of a virus, but of technology, because uh, companies like Linden Labs predicted a couple of years ago that within the within five to ten years, mixed reality will be uh, mixed reality technologies like holographic technologies and three D technologies will be as commonplace, they said, as the iPhone. And when that happens, um, I believe that in that that in-person meetings will be impacted. Little did I realize that it would happen much quicker because of a virus. And so I think the genie is out of the bottle to answer your question. Mm -hmm. I think we will probably see hybrid approaches. I'm still a believer in in in-person. Nothing beats looking somebody three-dimensionally in the eyes and, and shaking hands, although who knows what will happen with shaking hands. 
I'll talk to you about that in a moment. But, you know, that in-person meeting is more powerful than it is online. But I think that the genie's out of the bottle. I think it's likely that even in BNI, you're going to see hybrids meetings where sometimes they're in person, sometimes they're online. And I think that's inevitable. Now, when I wrote that in 2018, my BNI directors in particular thought I was off my rocker. But um, you know, look at where we're at. And so I think we will do in person again, but it's likely to be a hybrid. Now, let's talk about the handshake. I, I love shaking hands. I, I believe that physical contact is is important. But I also love what they do in India. And I did a, a blog on this, a video blog. Your listeners can see it at um, IvanMeisner.com. Go to IvanMeisner.com. You can do a search on, on what I think the future is of handshakes. Uh, I think we'll probably go back to it in North America, but well, I'll tell you, I think the, 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 the people in India have the best approach. They not only bow, which many Asian cultures do, they put their hands together and, and bow and say namaste. I, I believe that is actually a great way to meet people. And you don't have to say namaste. You, you put your hands together like, like almost like you're praying and, and bow and say, hello, it's, it's so nice to meet you. I, I think that's a great way to not spread the virus. I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll happen in North America, but I wish it would. I think it's a, a great technique to ease back into uh, face-to-face meetings. I think it'll spread a different virus, which is love. You know, yeah. it, it really is. You know, when you brought me there and told me that story, I, I actually did it. Namaste and bowed my head to you. Um, it, 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 there's something about it, the, even the words, that it's like a gift to to them. It's a blessing in a way. Yes. It's sending you know your your compassion, your 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 passion, your love to someone else. Often with a handshake, you know, it, it can be if done correctly, it can be very similar. Um, but often people aren't when you bring your hands together in prayer like format. There's something about the physicality of of yeah. putting you in a different mindset, and that energy shifts and transfers, which gives a different experience. So I think it's a, a fantastic thought, and I encourage every one of our listeners to do that, try it, because not only do we need to make subtle changes like this for the health and well-being of, of everyone we know, yet we can do it in, in ways that we have no even understanding of how powerful it, it is. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I think it's, it's, it's more powerful than just simply bowing because, because putting that hands together, there is a touch. You're touching one hand to another, but uh, there is a touch and there is that, that sense of, I don't know, I just have always felt a better sense of connection mm. when I've gone to India and done that than than just simply bowing or not shaking hands. Yeah. Well, this is a this is a refreshing way to think of it, and I'm thanking you for that that idea. I'm going to bring it into my family and uh, teach it to my children and start check doing out the it. Blog. Yes, check and out the and blog. we will have that blog. I will be checking it out right after we Dude, get off this call. And I think it's way better than the fist bump, which is every time I do the fist bump, I'm just like, hey, bro, how are you doing, man? It <laughs> yes. It just doesn't feel professional to me or the elbow bump or and forget about the toe bump, you know, we bump two feet together. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. That's just too weird. That's right. That's right. Well, I think, uh, I think the namaste is definitely certainly more heartfelt and uh, powerful connector. So we will have the link to that video in the show notes for the listener and give it a watch, take it on, share with us uh, in our social media and our Facebook group, how it's impacting you and how it's bringing love into your life uh, and calm and peace uh, and tranquility into your life by just doing that simple practice. I think it's a, a great way. Of course, you'll likely be doing it with people that you're in the great pause with, your family and, and people close to you in your households. But uh, in the future, we'll be doing it with our neighborhoods and and beyond. Yeah. Ivan, this has been absolutely tremendous. Uh, I, I was not uh, misguided in my waking up this morning thinking <laughs> this would be a refreshing conversation, and it certainly has been. Uh, thank you so much for your generosity on behalf of all of our listeners for giving us your time to come and share what's going on for you, but as well for the thousands of people that you impact. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Well, thank you. I, I 
appreciate you having me on. And for anyone that wants to to check out, maybe you know you haven't gone to a BNI meeting, check out BNI online. You can go to BNI.com and and find out where where chapters are meeting online, and we'll eventually go back to in person. So thanks for having me on your show. Beautiful, Ivan, and I. I echo that. This is fill that time with checking out something you can do and move your business forward. It, it, the world has not stopped. There are pauses, but this is a place to put the play button on. And we absolutely love the organization and have so many members in our community that have changed and transformed their life as a result of BNI. So thank you, Ivan, again. Thank you. Beautiful. And with that, we wrap another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper podcast. To learn more about today's wonderful guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources, you can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.